Well, 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 here we are. The problem with camera views, as I've stated before, has always been that we never really get enough time with the camera. And that's not just me, that is just about every review you see on YouTube for the most part. We, when a camera is released, we get about two days, sometimes one day, sometimes a week with the camera, uh, a week if they're nice. Um, and so you can't really do a very thorough review. You can just kind of gloss over some of the features and some of the things that are new to that camera. Um, you can test it right away and see if it responds as well as their marketing material suggests it responds. Um, but to really understand a camera well and to see how good it actually is to doing the things that you like it to do, you need a lot more time. Um, and so I was really thrilled when Nikon said, hey, we've got a Z7 for you uh, that we'd like you to try out and we'll give you some time with it. And it was very uh, good timing on their part because I was just leaving to France and well, here I am in uh, beautiful France in the Vercors region. Um, and I've traveled throughout France in the last two weeks with this camera and I want to give you a sense of what this camera was like. Now, there's a couple caveats. This camera is not a video strong camera. Consider it like the a7R 3 It's a high resolution camera. It really excels at stills, not at video. It does shoot video. I'm shooting video on it right now, which is why you don't see it in my hands. Um, so the video is very good, especially when it's on a tripod. And we're gonna talk about video a little bit at the end, um, but I really wanna focus this review on the photography element of this camera because I think that's more fair. If you are a video shooter, you're obviously going to want the Z6. It's a smaller resolution set sensor and it performs much better at video. It's designed essentially for video. So consider it sort of like their competition version of the a7 III from Sony. Um, and so this is a very exciting time because with the Z7, this is a, a long time coming for Nikon. Nikon was v essentially hemorrhaging a lot of sales due to Sony's innovation. And a lot of Nikon and Canon users were saying, hey guys, get on the bandwagon. Mirrorless is the way to go. We're tired of these large cameras. Um, and you know, my review of the Canon, I, again, I didn't get a lot of time with it, but my overall experience with it, with it, and I think a lot of others was, it was a bit of a disappointment. Whereas with Nikon, uh, the reviews in, you know, tend to be very excellent. People are really loving this camera. So I wanna dive into sort of why Nikon has had such a success with the Z7 and the, and the Z6, um, but particularly the Z7. So without further ado, I'm gonna go through my likes and my dislikes, and we're gonna find out where we end up. So, LZ. So I got my computer here with me just because I don't have a ton of time to memorize all the things that I want to say. Um, so I'm just going to be referring to this from time to time. My apologies. Um, but uh, I'm going to go first through all the things that I really liked about the camera. And oftentimes when I'm analyzing how good a camera is, I think with optical quality um, and with uh, image quality, they're all quite good these days. So it's hard to say, oh, the, you know, the image on this camera is garbage. I don't think that's really true anymore. Uh, there are exceptions to the rules, of course, but I think it's how the camera operates, how you use it, how it feels in your hand, um, and how easy is it to use, um, how intuitive is it. And so these are the things that are far more important to me oftentimes than any sort of uh, small little image thing. Um, and the first thing that really stands out with me with this camera is basically how it feels in your hand and where the controls are and how it works. Um, you know, you could pick up this camera right away and immediately uh, know where everything is and start using it without too much confusion. I remember when I first pulled it out of the box and I kind of turned it on, um, I can immediately find everything I needed. And that's not always true of other cameras. I mean, we've struggled with Sony in the past. I've actually struggled with Panasonic from time to time. Um, Canon too can have some things hidden, um, that type of thing. So this is a case where with this camera, nothing's really hidden. Everything is kind of placed very, very well. And I know that what a lot of people who are shooting with DSLRs and they're 
kind of hesitant to go over to a mirrorless camera. That's often because they look at mirrorless cameras like little toys um, and they don't feel like a professional grip. They don't feel like you can professionally hold them and, and operate them, uh, especially people with big hands. My hands are sort of average size, so like I don't really worry about that too much. But um, I know that with the Z7, you get this mirrorless body, but you get this really monster kind of grip. Monster is a bit of an overstatement, but a really nice solid grip. And I know that if you're a professional shooter, you really appreciate that. And when I'm walking around with the camera just holding it in my hands, I'm not really fearful that I'm going to drop it or anything like that. You get a really good firm grip on it. So in terms of the menu system, in terms of where they've placed all the function buttons and the wheels and the dials um, and the size of the hand grip, very, very excellent. I think it's probably one of the best mirrorless cameras for a professional user just based on the design of the body itself. So let's move along. The port flaps, so the flaps that cover the uh, HDMI ports, the flaps that cover uh, the audio in and out and all the other stuff. In other cameras, especially, now I'm a Sony user, one of the things I don't like about Sony is that the flaps are hinged at the bottom and they don't really form that great of a seal as well. And so when you pull them open, they kind of dangle in a weird places, especially if you've got um, a cage around it for video. It's just a real annoyance. But the Nikon ones have a hinge at the top and they form a really great seal and you just pop it open. It's just, it makes so much more sense. The flaps don't get in the way um, and it feels like it's a really secure fit. So especially if you're in sort of like moderate weather conditions, light drizzle or something like that, you're not really gonna worry about getting any water into that seal. It is exceptionally well made. One other thing that I really liked about this camera was the custom white balance stuff. Um, they give you a variety of options and one of the challenges that you might face, it's rare, but if you're shooting people uh, at night in an urban environment, you're often having to deal with sodium vapor lighting and sodium vapor just emits yellow uh, in the color spectrum. It doesn't really have any other colors in that light. It's just a high efficiency light before LED lighting came along. Um, and so it can really wreck skin tones. Uh, they've got a custom white balance for sodium vapor and a few other things, which is really great. And so it gives you a little bit more flexibility in your white balance if you like to shoot in a variety of different environments. The next like for me has always been a bit of an issue with me with Sony and a few other cameras, that when you're shooting photos and you shoot a bunch of garbage photos, and you just want to delete them really quick. It's never really quick. You got to press garbage and then you got to toggle up and then you got to like press the yes and then it sometimes asks you, do you, are you sure? And so it's like 18 steps to do just one simple thing. And I know that that's a protection mechanism, but it's poorly engineered as far as I'm concerned. Nikon solves all of this. All you do is press the garbage can twice. Dump, dump, done. Dump, dump done, right? Super fast. So as far as like looking at photos and just scrapping anything that you don't want, you can operate it super quick. Bravo to you, Nikon. You won my heart with that one. The next thing we're going to talk about is the high resolution. Now, this is a very large sensor, 47 megapixel sensor. And so as a result, you can crop in the 47 megapixel. That's a huge sensor. That's a huge amount of resolution. That was almost unheard of for a consumer or prosumer camera, um, you know, back even five years ago. This was only like medium format digital camera backs were doing resolutions like this. So to have this resolution in your hands is pretty incredible. Um, and that means that you can shoot wide and then just kind of crop to your flavor. And with portrait stuff, um, with sports, maybe that's not so much of an issue, but I know in this particular case, as a travel photography camera, this has been super helpful because I'm moving fast. Sometimes I'm shooting from the car window. Sometimes I'm shooting uh, a quick street scene, whatever it is, and I don't have time because I'm just trying to capture something very quickly to think about my framing specifically. So if I shoot a bit wider, I can crop in and I can still get massive resolution, more than I'll ever need uh, when cropping in. And I use this several times. So it's a really great feature um, to have this and to be able to crop in and, and resize and, and sort of reframe your photo. Um, I will say this, and it's not so much a critique, but like the Z7 and probably the Z6 for its size, I wouldn't say they're great travel cameras. Now, this is a matter of subjective opinion because on this trip, I have seen so many people traveling around with huge DSLRs and they don't seem to have a problem with it. However, uh, I have a problem with it. Um, I don't like carrying around a big camera and I did feel that the camera was a bit big and the lenses were a bit big for travel photography. I prefer something like a Fujifilm camera, for example, like the X-T30, um, something like that. 
is a bit better. Um, smaller lenses, smaller body, but that's kind of their niche. That's what they're designed for. Nikon is not attempting to create a travel camera, okay? So I'm like kind of taking the bull out of the pen here. It's not where it's supposed to be, um, but it's still a lot smaller than like a D850. So, uh, you know, in terms of it being used for travel, it's a lot better for that. So the next thing up that I really love about this camera is their VR stability. Now their VR makes vibration reduction. This is their way of saying it is both a stabilized sensor um, and also a stabilized lens. And paired together, you get a very stable image. How stable? Well, I found a waterfall uh, and Aren't waterfalls the best thing to test out long exposure? I didn't have a tripod with me, so basically I just took the camera and I placed it on my leg. Um, so effectively hand-holding. And I tested at different shutter speeds, and I found that uh, I can get a reliably sharp image up to one-third of a second, effectively handheld. One-third of a second. That's pretty good. After that, obviously, it got a bit messy, but uh, you know, it's not that long ago where you need to put on a tripod with a remote to be able to get long exposure of that nature at least. So uh, their VR is exceptional. Another great thing about this camera is the lenses that it comes with. They've redesigned their mount, as you know, um, and they've redesigned their lenses. And so their new Z lenses are pretty cool. They're basically medium format lenses. Um, and the reason that's important is that with any lens in the world, world, uh, when you get closer to the edges, especially at the more open apertures, like wide open and within two to three stops of wide open, things get a little muddy towards the corners and you never really get a beautifully sharp image. So if you're a, land, a landscape photographer, um, like an architecture photographer, that is a big issue because you can't have your image getting soft towards the corners. Um, so what they've been able to do with this new mount is make a larger image circle. So what you're seeing now when you go wide open is you're basically seeing a cropped uh, image effectively for their image circle. Now it's still going to be an equivalent full frame image, so you're not getting what you think of as a cropped image, uh, you're still getting a full frame field of view, but uh, you get a much sharper image wide open. You get effectively as sharp of an image wide open as you would have gotten two stops or three stops in. So uh, really, really great. You are gonna have to buy all new lenses um, if you want that feature. If you don't want that feature, they have an adapter, which works great with old Nikon lenses. I did find out though that um, because I'm not a Nikon shooter, I didn't know this, but they're old D-style, D-series lenses, um, uh, which required a mechanism actually to do the autofocus, don't work with the adapter for a good reason because there's no mechanical mechanism in there. Um, so I had some manual focus lenses with me uh, that I used with it. Worked great in terms of just like, you know, its adaptability, but I lost any autofocus with it. So just make sure that the older Nikon lenses that you're using uh, are compatible with uh, their autofocus. One last thing that I really, really like, and that is their Snap Bridge app. Um, with other cameras, Panasonic, Sony, I struggled sometimes to get the app to connect to the camera. Um, but with this camera, I had zero issues. It sends out a great Wi-Fi signal. I was able to uh, immediately download full resolution, full resolution images onto my iPhone and edit them on my iPhone and then upload them right away. So it's a really awesome uh, feature. It's a really great app, has no latency, no problems. Control is amazing. Uh, I would say it is the best camera interface that I've ever used. And so I really enjoy using SnapBridge. Kind of gonna miss it a bit, I'll be honest. My last like, which is actually probably the most important like about this camera, is their colors. And this is something that Nikon fans have always talked about. They really love the Nikon colors. And I know the first time that I picked up the D850 and tried it, I was like, holy moly this thing makes really beautiful images right out of the can. Uh, and so I was really excited to get the Z7 because I loved the look of the D850 so much. And I know that in the era of RAW, you can make anything look like anything. So whether you're shooting with a Sony, you can basically make a Sony look like a Nikon and vice versa, but it takes work. You've got to go into RAW, you've got to kind of futz with the phase of the colors and you've got to move things around and it does take time. If you don't have that kind of time, you rather spend that time shooting as one of my friends says, then going with a camera like a Nikon or Canon that has very reputable color science um, is going to be a time saver. So let's move on to the things that I don't like. 
Now, the first thing that I don't like is a super subjective thing. Uh, take it, please, with a grain of salt, because in a lot of other reviews, people lauded this. They said it was great. Um, and that is that there are two function buttons sitting right next to the lens. Um, and that is really awesome because you can make some super quick changes. When you turn the camera on stock, it basically assigns that to white balance. Um, and you don't even have to move your grip because the two buttons are like right there. It's super awesome. Except for the fact that I hit it like every couple seconds. It was really frustrating. Um, and I was like wondering in a couple of my image, why did my white balance change all of a sudden? You know, because I'm shooting so fast and I'm like accidentally touching it. Um, and so basically I had to just turn them off uh, because I kept hitting them all the time. I don't know if you can improve upon that. I don't know that you can move them anywhere else in that area where you wouldn't hit them so much. But for me, I hit them all the time and I just had to turn them off. I never got an opportunity to really harness the power of them. I suppose if you are regimented, you can you know, sort of train yourself to not touch them. I have the camera for two weeks. I'm not gonna train myself to not touch them. I just turn them off. The next issue that I have the camera, sort of like a, a bit of a non-issue, but uh, it's worth talking about, which is that you have no control over your curves, your picture profile curves within the camera itself. You have this feature called D-lighting, which basically boosts the shadows, which is a great feature, sort of, it's not HDR, it just sort of gives you a bit more information in the shadows, and it works, I liked it. Um, um, but I didn't really use it that much. When you're shooting raw, I don't know that you need it all that much. You can bring down sharpness, you can kind of lower contrast, and you can lower um, your saturation, um, but you can't control your highlights and your shadows and make sort of custom curves. This is more of an issue for video. With RAW, there's so much latitude in RAW. I've never really needed to do that with RAW photography. Um, it's always been an issue with video for me not with anything else. Um, but if you're shooting JPEGs, things like that, you might want to be able to lower the effect of your highlights, for example, which is, you know, I'll notice in the camera that just visually the highlights are peaking a lot. They're blowing out a lot. And so being able to bring that down would be nice. Can't do it in the camera, which is a bit of a frustration. But if you have, and I gotta say the name of it here, Nikon's Picture Control Utility 2 app for your computer, well, then you can go in and you can make custom uh, picture profiles to the cows come home uh, and you can drop down you know uh, your highlights raise your shadows create curves custom curves custom looks and then upload that into your camera so nikon has intelligently given you full functionality to be able to customize this camera as much as you want you're just going to need their app to be able to do it i'm sure you have a computer i'm sure that's not an issue so a bit of a non-critique critique the next thing, again, another small critique, which is that you can fully customize every function button and every wheel within the camera, except for the multifunction, what I call wheel. It's not a wheel, it doesn't spin, but where the OK button is. Where the OK button is, uh, you can uh, have a wheel around it that you can press up, down, left, right, that kind of thing. And you can customize everything on the camera, including the uh, joystick and the OK button, but not the wheel around it. And because my hand is almost always on that wheel, selecting something or other, um, I always like to, to customize those things in each camera that I get because it's just my personal habit. Um, and I like to be able to transfer my habits over from, from camera to camera. I couldn't do it. Uh, on this and so it just forced me to have to learn where new things were and sometimes I never really got used to it. They have the ISO button up on top. I would have liked to put ISO down there. I could make faster moves because my thumb's already there versus having to launch it up on top. So a bit frustrating uh, with that. Um, and. It's a minor thing. I, I would like to think that Nikon uh, would change that in the future. Who's to say? Um, but that's basically it. Those are just all my critiques with the camera. Now, yesterday, Nikon launched the new firmware, but my trip is coming to an end. I gotta give the camera back. I haven't had time to try the new firmware, but I want to give you a sense of what the new firmware has and what it does. The very first thing that the new firmware does is include eye autofocus. Now, a lot of other cameras are including eye autofocus, specifically Sony is, you know, very um, celebrated for having such good eye autofocus. Um, their eye autofocus now matches what Sony can do, and Sony just updated theirs as well to add some new functionality. Nikon's new firmware 2.0 matches what Sony does in terms of having both uh, eye autofocus in autofocus continuous and autofocus single. Um, so that's very, very important. You get it in both focus modes. And with Nikon, I'm not sure what's funny, but with Nikon, you can uh, choose left, right, left eye, right eye kind of thing. 
left eye, right eye. I gotta get my left and rights squared up. Uh, another thing in terms of firmware is their improved low light autofocus. I did notice that with the previous firmware that low light autofocus wasn't great. Um, it could have been a lot better. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons maybe you go with a DSLR. Um, not sure, uh, but it's, it, it wasn't great. Uh, they've now significantly improved that. Uh, again, I haven't had a chance to test this, um, but that's nice to see that the low light autofocus is better. You know, when you're a little bit underexposed or in darker situations, um, you can rely on it to get you some better shots. Um, the next thing is the image review. This wasn't an issue for me, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even notice this until they brought it up. But uh, when you take a photo and then the image pops up, it, there's about a one second lag time. Um, I guess if you're shooting sports or shooting fast paced portrait work, that type of thing, um, Maybe you need it to be like, oh, like you have to keep waiting for it to come up and it might be a, a bit frustrating. And I've, you know, heard that some people have uh, been frustrated by that in some of the articles that I've read about the new firmware upgrade. Uh, now they've eliminated that lag time, which is fantastic. So uh, as soon as you take the photo, the photo comes back up. So you can make quicker decisions and knowing that you're getting the shots that you want and not having to wait around. Great. Um, the next thing is the new uh, auto electronic front curtain shutter. So when you're using a mechanical shutter, there's a lot of advantages because it eliminates effectively uh, rolling shutter. Um, but the downside is that you're going to get shutter shock. Um, and so that means that the uh, image may not be as sharp because the camera sort of vibrates every time the shutter goes on. And it also reduces the life of the camera because every time the shutter goes, it's a me mechanical process. And if you've owned a vehicle, you know that now eventually things break down after you've used them for long enough. So uh, a lot of resistance to using mechanical shutters um, so that you preserve the life of your camera. And so you'll go with the electronic shutter, but of course with the electronic shutter, you're getting an electronic readout uh, with the, the sensor. And so you're gonna get things like rolling shutter, a lot of rolling shutter effects and things like that. And then you can't also sync with flash with, roll, with electronic shutter to certain, after certain um, uh, shutter speeds. So what this now does is it sets it to auto. So before you'd have to sort of analyze your environment going, okay, what do I need here? Do I need mechanical shutter or do I need uh, electronic shutter? Well, I actually need, uh, you know, mechanical shutter, but I'd like to have electronic shutter. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, now what it's gonna do is you can set it to auto and it will intelligently sort of hybridize the process. So you're going to get a better image quality and be able to shoot with flash, uh, get less rolling shutter, uh, but also less shutter shake and less damage uh, in terms of like, uh, you know, use uh, from your you know mechanical shutter. So it's really the best of both worlds, and uh, apparently the results are fantastic with this. So uh, you're going to see probably a lot of reviews come out talking about uh, this uh, particular feature. So before we kind of wrap up, I do want to just talk about video with this camera for a bit. Um, if you own this camera, obviously you don't want a second camera for video. You're not going to buy a Z7 and Z6 unless you're rolling in money. Um, so if you buy this camera because you're a photographer but occasionally need to shoot video, here are some things that you need to know. The rolling shutter on this camera is not great. Um, and when I had the VR you know, fully turned on, it was hard to tell, am I looking at rolling shutter? Or am I looking at electronic stability algorithm muck-ups? Because there's a lot of wobbliness going on. It's not a great camera for video handheld. Uh, I wouldn't use it for handheld at all. So my suggestion is if you are shooting video on this camera, do what I'm doing right now. Place it on a tripod, place it on a fluid head, lock it off. Again, Nikon makes a point to say, this is not a video camera. The Z6 is, and the Z6 has some great reviews about how great the video is on that camera. So think of it again, the Z7 is like their Sony a7R 3 high resolution, made for photographs. And the Z6 is the lower resolution designed effectively for both photographs and video. And honestly, the resolution in the Z6 is large. It's like in the 20s, it's great. I don't see a problem with that. It's like the a7 III not a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. You just have less ability to resize when you're taking photographs. Okay, so to wrap this video up, what I wanna say, and this is, guys, my honest opinion, um, I can't think of a major shortcoming with this camera. There's many other cameras that I reviewed, uh, and again, I didn't have a lot of time with them, but there was always sort of like one feature that was like, oh, if they just changed that, you'd have a great camera. Uh, with this camera, I haven't found that one thing. I feel like it's a very good camera for what it's designed to do. It's not a great travel camera for me, but that's just me. 
it's not really an issue. Um, if you are a professional shooter, and this is the camera designed for you if you are a professional shooter. If you're a Nikon D850 or D750 or whatever shooter, uh, and you want to get a mirrorless camera because you're tired of the weight, you're going to get the best of both worlds. You've got a lightweight mirrorless camera with a big good solid grip um, and the functionality that you are used to with Nikon. And with the new lenses, you get a much sharper image wide open, which is a great saver. And they're coming out with new lenses all the time. So they've got a great variety of lenses right now. And I'm sure that that line is going to continue to increase. If you are thinking about buying a full frame mirrorless camera, whether it is going to be the Z6 or the Z7, it is a great competition to Sony um, and potentially to Panasonic's new S1 camera as well. Um, and so you've got a camera that uh, really has everything that you're going to need, including some fantastic color science. So again, journalists are people that don't have a lot of time to futz with their raw images. They just need to like kind of develop and go. Um, the color science on Nikon is the best, some of the best at least I've ever seen. I mean, Canon is pretty good too, I have to admit, and, and I've been pretty happy with Fujifilm. Um, but uh, right out of the can, and that the color science of this camera is fantastic. So I want to thank Nikon for letting me have this camera for two weeks. It was a fantastic opportunity. Bit big to lug around uh, for a lot of travel stuff, but I still had a great time with it and really appreciate it. Guys, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, share any of your ideas about using this camera. It's been out for a while, so I know a lot of you users are already uh, having this camera and have played with it and used it. Comment in the comment section below. Uh, we'd love to hear, I'd love to have that dialogue with you and find out anything that I may have missed or misspoken about. Um, please let me know. Always happy to have that conversation. For now, as always, happy shooting and au revoir, à bientôt.